Once when I was in China, I bought on a skewer about this long, about, uh, it was about six big fat beetles that had been prepared over a barbecue, and I ate them. I was disappointed. It didn't taste like anything. It tasted like I was eating something crunchy that had no taste. Nothing. Um, in, uh, Thailand, I went to one of those insect stalls that you see where people are selling roasted crickets and grasshoppers and things like that, and these things that look like scorpions, but obviously they're not, and I had one of each. The grasshoppers actually have a taste, although these ones were prepared in a certain way. I guess they were wok fried, so they have that nice fried taste, and they season them with, uh, I think it's lemon pepper. They actually tasted good. It's the only insect I've ever eaten that actually tasted good. Um, everything else is just insipid. There's just no flavor to it at all. Um, in the Philippines, I ate something called dinuguan, which is a soup made of pig's blood. Uh, it's just basically uh, pig's blood boiled down a bit, served hot. Um, sometimes people boil it down to the point where it's a pudding or just a mush. Um, and strangely enough, I only ate that out of sort of curiosity because as a lifelong classicist, that's essentially what the ancient Spartans ate every day. They ate something called the Spartan black broth, uh, which was um, pork cooked in blood, salt, and vinegar, and I don't know, a few other things, guts. And, and the pork that was in it usually wasn't uh, regular meat, usually it was organ meat. So I tried that. It, <laughs> it was actually good. It was, it was more like just a, a rich meat broth. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what else? In um, Also in the Philippines, I ate something called balut, which is a duck's egg with a little embryo in it, uh, boiled, and then you eat that with hot, uh, sometimes hot peppers or um, or just a savory sauce. And it's got the little, sometimes a little chicken inside that you can actually see, and oftentimes there's feathers in it. I only ate that once. That one was a bit much, and I had to get drunk to do it. Uh, but I decided I was going to try it at least once. I was curious as to what this would taste like. It tasted like some sort of, I don't know, um, egg with a slight dose of, I guess, very mild tasting kind of tuna-like uh, twinge to it. There's a couple of other things that I'd like to try. Uh, somewhere in Spain there's this uh, dish where you take a chicken, you kill it, you bury it underground until it goes off a bit, and then you bake it. Apparently it tastes a little bit like blue cheese mixed with chicken. I <laughs> uh, thought I'd try that. Uh, when I was in Norway, I ate lutefisk, which actually, if you ask me, is a nice fish It's uh, when it's prepared properly. Uh, it's actually quite good. A lot of people find it completely revolting, but if you just sort of change gears a little bit, it's just a slightly altered type of fish with a jelly-like consistency and a slightly stronger non-fish taste, and the fish taste is slightly uh, sedated by the lye that's put in it. Um, but it's actually not bad. I like the insanely strong, like ludicrously strong cheese that'll make your gums ache when you try it. Um, and uh, there's any number of foods that I've eaten. Even here in Canada, there's some insanely weird foods that I've tried. And I think I've, I'll try them once just to see. Um, an ex-girlfriend of mine was a native Canadian. And uh, where I live, it gets really cold. Today, it's about, I think, 35 degrees below zero with the wind chill. And below zero is uh, centigrade. So it's really cold. This is like Russia-type cold. Well, I had, she gave me a piece of, um, as far as I remember, it was rancid moose fat, I think. And I ate that, chewed it up, and suddenly my temperature shot up. I could actually feel it. I could feel my body temperature going up. It felt sudden. I can see why a native Canadian would have developed this kind of eating habit. Um, the, Can the native Canadians still to this day eat all kinds of exotic meats. Um, the ones that actually live sort of up in the, up north and still live by, uh, not really their traditional way, but they, you know, the sort of a modernized version of their traditional lifestyle. They eat all kinds of stuff that you and I might consider strange, but they actually enjoy it. They, they say that this is, this is nice stuff. This is stuff that 
you know, I ate as a kid, and I'm going to continue to eat it. In fact, uh, an exposure to the modern diet, or what we would call the modern diet, with a huge amount of carbs and stuff like that, is bad for them. Uh, that's an argument that I think everyone is aware of. But they eat stuff that is considered strange. There's any number of other things that I could say that I've tried, but all of this is more or less just curiosity. I thought, well, I'll give this a try. I want to see what it's like. Um, so, yeah, I, I would eat horse flesh if I could get a hold of it, just to see what it tastes like. Um, I've read about it in books. Apparently, I don't know if it's true to this day, but it's widely available in France. My understanding is that it is. I don't know. Uh, and uh, there's all kinds of types of meat that I would try. I think the ethical dilemma that I might find insurmountable is this idea of an endangered species. I wouldn't want to try whale meat. I've never been in a position where I could try it, um, but uh, I don't think I would want to eat it. Oh, by the way, I've eaten seal meat. And if you know how seal meat gets harvested, it's not nice. Now, that's another huge argument in and of itself that's quite uh, quite common here in Canada. The seal meat that I ate had been trapped by a, a native Canadian, but it's trapped by non-native Canadians, and that's a huge argument in and of itself that rages all the time here in Canada and probably gets all over the world and probably results in the odd Canadian flag getting burned. Uh, well, that's... I guess, you know, it's good for everyone to see their flag burn once in a while, I suppose. Um, would I eat human flesh? In extremis, yes, but there's all kinds of things that I think any of us would do in extremis. But, again, uh, this idea of human... Um, of human man-made sort of laws, or human-made laws, uh, homo sapiens-made laws generally holds, in my opinion, the idea that something must be unethical and it must be disruptive. Cannibalism will be both. Cannibalism, I can't see any situation in which we could somehow, in a non-disruptive fashion, <laughs> um, practice cannibalism as a species. Generally, when societies do practice cannibalism, they eat the people from the next village. You don't eat your own. That doesn't happen. Well, I've never really studied it in depth, but um, it's... Uh, uh, my understanding is you go on a war raid or whatever, you uh, kill somebody, you drag his cadaver back or whatever, cook him up and eat him or something. I don't know. But you don't usually pen up a bunch of people over there in the, uh, in, in the farm area with all the other animals or whatever, raise them and eat them. Uh, that I've never heard of, but again, as I say, I've never really done an in-depth in study. So, yes, I understand... Um, that you could make the argument, well, if you eat um, uh, beef, why don't you eat mice, or, or uh, why don't you eat this fellow here? Uh, sorry, Ishmael, I picked him up on, while he was asleep just to put him on YouTube. Um, but um, why don't you uh, eat uh, a human being? Why don't you uh, eat any number of other strange things? Well, I've eaten an awful lot of other strange things. And I would probably, to be perfectly honest, if I was in a situation where I could eat a non-endangered species um, uh, that would be considered normally very strange to eat, uh, repulsive even, there's some bizarre desire in me that would want to try it. I would want to eat it. Um, and uh, I maybe that's some sort of defect in my character? I don't know. Again, I'm aware of the moral implications of eating meat. I'm aware of the ethical implications of harming something else to obtain something that you can get by not harming something else that may or may not be equally sentient. In other words, I understand that there is a distinction to be made between getting nourishment from a bowl of porridge um, and uh, getting nourishment from a steak. I understand. I actually do draw a distinction between the two. But... <clears throat> Would I eat something that's uh, considered revolting, bizarre, or ethically problematic? <laughs> I already had. I already have. Uh, thank you.